Well, it's becoming more and more clear now why BYD went and bought six mega ships to transport their cars around the world. Shipping capacity, apparently you can't keep up. There are too many cars, especially in particular electric cars, waiting to be shipped from China to other countries that the ships simply can't keep up with the demand. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Thank you so much for your support this year. I really appreciate it. It's been great to be able to present you with the most interesting subjects in the news. And I'll be speaking a keynote speech at the Electric Car Show in Melbourne, 1 p.m. on the 23rd of September. So that is, wow, only nine days away. Love to see you there. If you'd like a ticket, send me an email. And also, thank you to our patrons. Really appreciate your support. If you'd like to be a patron, I'll put a link in the description. Unprecedented global demand for Chinese cars, especially EVs, is outstripping shipping capacity. China is flooding the world with cheap cars, so much that it's building a record number of ships just to transport them. So it's almost like it's created two industries here. It's creating its own automotive industry, in particular EVs that are disrupting the rest of the automotive industry, and as a result, it needs to build more ships. So it's just building more ships. The world has become hooked on cheap vehicles from China's automakers, including MG, BYD, Sake. I mean, obviously your LDV, Maxxis, there's a range of vehicles coming as well. And this means that a new report showing that EVs are about to flood the world from China is, well, probably correct. The demand for Chinese-made automobiles is apparently so great that China doesn't have enough ships to fulfill the export for new cars. This is sort of getting a little bit scary. If you combine the fact that we just saw battery prices went down 10% in a single month, the month of July, down 10%, guess who's making those batteries? The Chinese. It's meaning their EVs are becoming more affordable and it's going to be very hard to compete. China's automotive industry is defying the pattern seen in export earnings. In other areas of trade, the company has seen demand for China-made goods slow down, with overall export figures falling by 5.5% in 2023. So that's quite a surprise. I mean, we haven't seen global manufacturing decline this year. In fact, it's increased. So clearly China is banking on disrupting the automotive industry so it doesn't lose other sectors potentially. Meanwhile, export demand for cars has quadrupled, Chinese cars has quadrupled in the last three years. And it's increased by a further 86% this year, just from January to July this year, 86% growth, meaning it surpassed Japan. And it's become the leading exporter worldwide of vehicles. You've got to be a little concerned if you're Japan and Germany, and I think they are. Chinese automakers are offering an increasing range of internal combustion engine vehicles and EVs to overseas consumers at very, very cheap prices. They're basically just undercutting the competition. Then they're going to do it as long as it takes for them to basically get a massive market hold for cars. This is basically their strategy, undercut, 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 until you become the predominant market shareholder. The other thing to keep in mind is in China, there is literally millions of cars that are getting dust. They're sitting in car parks. They can't be sold. They don't meet emissions regulations, or they at least won't by the end of this year when it changes at the end of December. And so automakers are saying like Nissan, for example, is saying, well, we need to ship cars outside of China because we can't sell them inside of China. Customers in China used to buy legacy auto automobiles and they're changing their buying habits. So now automakers in China, or the main ones that you've heard of, they're saying, well, what are we going to do with all these cars? Well, we'll ship them outside of China. So now there's a good chance your premium German vehicle is actually no longer German, but Chinese. Anyway, one of the issues that has been caused by Chinese regulations is the government's strict zero COVID policy. This stifled demand in some Chinese sectors, and it kind of forced some, some companies, some brands to look elsewhere going to places like Bangladesh and India. Even after restrictions were lifted, confidence hasn't been restored. And we can see that by the fact that manufacturing is down by 5.5% this year when globally GDP has increased. And the other thing is, this is the perfect storm because new cars 
are moving to EVs. New regulations, consumers want new products, they want electric cars because they're the future, and so it's the perfect storm. Chinese manufacturers are leading the world in the production of EVs. In fact, more than 60% of all EVs worldwide are made in China. But that leaves an oversupply of internal combustion engine cars unsold in China, and there are millions of them. What are they gonna do? Ship them from China to other car markets, flood those markets with cheap vehicles. Many of these cars are now being diverted to overseas countries and offered to foreign consumers at low prices. A report from the New York Times cites the former chief of Chrysler China, who claims Chinese manufacturers have no choice but to dive headfirst into exports or risk the consequences of shuttering factories. Now, this applies more to legacy automakers with Chinese joint ventures in China because sales of locally made Chinese brands in China, they have actually grown. There's really tough competition for them. Now, they're still selling at a loss. However, a lot of them think, what are we doing this for? Let's just sell these vehicles outside of China and we don't have to make a loss. We can make a profit. The automotive export assault, carscoops.com says, from the east is seemingly indiscriminate in its targets. Chinese automakers have seized massive market share in Russia in particular, following the withdrawal of many Western brand names from the nation in response to the ongoing Ukraine war. Now the biggest selling, the best selling automobiles in Russia are made in China by Chinese brands. Large portions of the Southeast Asian, South American and Mexican markets have seen Chinese brands make significant inroads for their products. And this comes right as we've just learned that BYD, Chang'an, MG, Great Wall and a number of other manufacturers are planning right hand drive production factories to build EVs in Thailand. So they're not just going for left hand drive, they're going for right hand drive as well, in particular the Southeast Asian market. And it's a really big market, Southeast Asia. Put it this way, the fastest growing EV market in the world this year is Thailand. They went from 1% to 10% in a matter of months. Incredible. In Mexico, the Chevrolet Aveo is based on a rebadged Wuling made in China, courtesy of Sake's partnership with General Motors. A similar story can be found for the Mexican Dodge Journey, which is actually a Trumpchi GS5, also made in China. And it's likely based on recent analysis that more than 33% of all cars sold worldwide in 2030 will be Chinese. This is a huge change on numbers that are well, less than half of that starting the beginning of this year. In Australia, MG owned by Saic, in other words, owned by the Chinese government and Alibaba, has become one of the country's best-selling vehicles in the new car market. Places like Australia and Europe, MG4s are selling very, very well, of course. Now, there were twice as many Chinese automakers in Europe at the Munich Motor Show as there were the last time it was held in 2021. The US, though. Well, that's a different story. The US has intentionally tried to prevent this onslaught from happening, and this is probably a good move. The US is a tough nut for Chinese automakers to crack, mostly because of the chicken tax or the basically penalties for selling cars in the US made in China. Now it does still happen and there are ways to get around this tax. And I've spoken about those in previous videos. The Trump era tariffs though on Chinese cars mean that few make it to the United States. Internal combustion engine and EV cars from China are subject to 25% levies as are gasoline powered vehicles, engines, and battery packs. Now, battery packs right now, it's a bit of a complex scenario because generally what automakers do, such as Tesla and many other automakers, they import the cells, and then they'll actually create the packs in the United States, and this enables them to get around some of these laws. However, shipbuilders are struggling to cater for this massive onslaught. It would seem the most significant holdup, says Car Scoops, for Chinese automakers is the lack of available ships to transport brand new cars around the world. And the car market worldwide this year has grown significantly versus last year. According to Daniel Nash, head of vehicle carriers at Vessels Value, Chinese automakers and their shipping lines have placed nearly all the 170 pending orders worldwide for new car carrying vessels. Prior to the boom, only four car carriers were ordered. So, of the 170 new ships being built 
to move cars around the world, almost all of them are Chinese companies who have ordered them. This comes as the cost to hire a car carrying ship has increased drastically over the past 12 months. In 2021, it would cost you around 16,000 US dollars per day. However, in 2023, the cost is now 105,000 US dollars. Chinese are saying, why are we doing this? Let's get around this. Let's disrupt another industry. So if the shipping industry continues to charge these really high rates, they'll be disrupted as well. Shipbuilders quoted by the New York Times speak of round the clock shifts every single day with one welder doing 12 hour shifts with a two hour break in the middle. Uh, basically, they can't build the ships fast enough. BYD, who are expected to be making an enormous push into Europe over the coming years with a range of new EVs, plus of course, they're targeting around 35 other countries, are spending 600 million US dollars for six of the biggest car carrying ships ever built in the history of mankind. Many of them are scheduled for delivery over the next 24 months. Well, I said this when I started the channel that this would happen. It's now happening. And well, I'm a little bit concerned. It's all happening faster than I thought it would. EV battery prices are dropping faster than I thought they would. Disruption will happen faster than we all thought it would. What does this mean for the future of the automotive industry, the most valuable industry worldwide? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.